Shabbat Shalom. At first, the prospect of being quarantined in my apartment did not bother me at all. It sounded downright blissful, albeit confining, no pressure to engage socially, an airtight excuse, and limitless acceptable DoorDash orders. That excitement lasted about three months before the novelty wore off and was replaced by apathy, isolation, and frustration. Since quarantine began nine months ago, the only people I've spent any appreciable time with in person are my parents, my sister, and my brother-in-law. I live in a one-bedroom apartment downtown. I'm emotionally exhausted from awkwardly navigating in-person errands, shouting through my mask at the dog park, and silently negotiating space in elevators. Quarantine turned out to be the opposite of what I imagined. It's been an emotionally turbulent and enduring journey of introspection. This week's Parsha, Miketz, focuses on inner worlds and personal journeys. From Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dream to the emotional journey Joseph himself takes to forgive his brothers, forge a new relationship with his family, and reconcile his own Egyptian assimilation. When he's reunited with his brothers, Joseph is conflicted about how to talk to them, and he fails the first time he attempts to engage. The story nearly ends in disaster when he sends his brothers on a fool's errand during a food shortage. However, each time he confronts his brothers, we witness his emotional growth marked by cathartic tears. Joseph cries four times during this story. Each is a pivotal moment. Once when Joseph overhears his brothers talking about him, Next, when he sees his brother Benjamin for the first time. Third, when he invites his brothers to a meal. And lastly, when he reveals himself to his brothers. Quote, his sobs were so loud that the Egyptians could hear. He embraced his brother Benjamin around the neck and wept. He kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. When Joseph cries for the last time, he weeps openly and the mask of harsh stoicism melts away. Joseph's tears transform him. We get a front row seat to his maturation from denial, sadness, and anger to softness, reconciliation, and authenticity. During quarantine, I found myself seeking out moments of authenticity and vulnerability within the public sphere. It's hard to find something real in the digital age where nothing is as it seems. Enter modern day hero and emotional train wreck, Michael Jordan. During Michael Jordan's Hall of Fame induction speech in 2009, Jordan famously took the stage and started bawling. His speech was raw, emotional, and fiercely competitive. It was a dissonant and confusing pop culture moment. One of the modern day heroes of the 20th century and the picture of masculinity weeping openly at a public engagement, it was arresting to say the least. So naturally, the internet enshrined this moment of public vulnerability by birthing what I would argue is the greatest internet meme of all time, the crying Jordan. This meme is one of the internet's greatest phenomenons. There's even an app for that a meme generator called the Crying Jordan Meme Generator. But the reason this unit of culture endured is because of its authenticity and vulnerability, not despite it. It reminds us that even heroes cry, and that's okay. It's a sign of progress and growth. In the absence of physical closeness, I feel a little lost, like Joseph, I want my family and friends around me. I want to see them and laugh with them in the same room. COVID stole a lot from us, but I am banking on being stronger once this is over. I'm hoping I will have gained some emotional endurance and can move past this time with grace, compassion, and
and love in a way that I can be proud of, even if it means shedding a lot of tears. Thank you.